The Hajj is undeniably the greatest journey a Muslim will take in his lifetime. A journey of sacrifice, self-discovery, and above all, a journey of servitude and obedience to Allah Almighty. Little do Muslims know that the rites of Hajj were ordained by the Almighty during the era of Prophet Ibrahim 4,000 years ago. Toward the end of his life, Ibrahim witnessed a century of struggle, movement, confrontation with the ignorance of his tribe, oppression of Nimrud, and the fanaticism of idol worshippers. His barren wife, Sarah, was an aristocrat. She was infertile, and he was more than a hundred years old. He was wishful, but not hopeful. Allah blessed him with a son, Ismail, from his maid Hajar. Every moment of the last days of his life had to be enjoyed. He enjoyed it by having Ismail, the boy, grew as a strong tree. He brought youth and happiness to Ibrahim's life. He was his father's hope, love, and kin. The message was revealed. Put the knife to the throat of your son and sacrifice him with your hands. How can one describe Ibrahim's fear by the shock of this message? The degree of his pain is beyond tolerance or imagination. Ibrahim, the most humble servant of Allah and the famous rebel of human history, started to shake as if he were falling apart. He was terribly shocked by the message, but the command was the order of Allah. In his older years, Ibrahim was commanded by Allah to take his wife Hajar and his newborn son Ismail to live in the barren desert plains of Mecca, a land which was by all means inhospitable, only to leave them with nothing more than some dates and a flask of water. As Ibrahim begins to leave, his wife Hajar emotionally cries out, to where are you going? To whom will you leave us? She frantically repeats this again and again. Ibrahim salam doesn't respond and just walks away. She then says, has Allah commanded you to do this? To which Ibrahim replied, yes. Being a noble woman, she replies, if that is the case, then Allah will not let us down. Shortly, after their dates and water are used up, Hajar began to search for help. She leaves her baby behind and proceeds to ascend the mountain of Safa. She looks far and wide, but to her disappointment, sees no one in sight. She races back down to check on her child and then continues her search, this time ascending the mountain of Marwa. She traverses back and forth between the mountains of Safa and Marwa until one narration states that Angel Gabriel descends and with the tip of his wing hits the ground and out sprouts the well of Zamzam. With water being the source of life, this event served as the beginning of what was to become the city of Mecca. This miraculous event is encapsulated in the Sa'i or running between Safa and Marwa that Muslims perform in the days of Hajj. Many years go by, Ibrahim returns to unite with his beloved wife and son Ismail. Shortly after his arrival, he sees a dream that he was sacrificing Ismail salam. Allah says, then when the boy reached the age to work with him, Ibrahim said, O oh my dear son, I have seen in a dream that I must sacrifice you. So tell me what you think. He replied, O oh my dear father, 
do as you are commanded. Allah willing, you will find me amongst the patient ones. Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail make their way to the place of sacrifice. As servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they know they must do what was commanded to them. Even if they don't want to do it. This is the principle of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us about. Along the way, shaitan comes towards Ibrahim alayhi salam. He knows that deep down Ibrahim alayhi salam would never want to harm his only son, let alone sacrifice him. Ibrahim alayhi salam knows that shaitan only wishes to deceive him. So he pelts him with some stones until shaitan withdraws. Then a second time shaitan appears and Ibrahim alayhi salam pelts him again. Shaitan appears for the third time. And Ibrahim alayhi salam pelts him yet again. After that, shaitan does not appear again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues in the Quran mentioning the story. And when they submitted to Allah's will, and Ibrahim laid him, Ismail, on the side of his forehead for sacrifice, we called out to him, O Ibrahim, you have already fulfilled the vision. Indeed, this is how we reward the good doers. That was truly a revealing test. And we ransomed his son with a great sacrifice and blessed Ibrahim with an honorable mention among later generations. Peace be upon Ibrahim. This is how we reward the doers of good. He was truly one of our faithful servants. Just as Ibrahim alayhi salam was about to sacrifice Ismail alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Jibreel alayhi salam to replace Ismail alayhi salam with a ram. When Ismail alayhi salam was replaced with a ram, the angels who were present exclaimed, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest, Allah is the greatest. When Ibrahim alayhi salam noticed that he had sacrificed a ram instead of his son, he exclaimed, La ilaha illallahu, wallahu akbar. There is no God but Allah, and Allah is the greatest. When Ismail alayhi salam noticed what had happened and that he had not been sacrificed, he exclaimed, Allahu akbar, wa lillahi alhamd. Allah is the greatest and to him is due all praise. A few years pass and once Ismail reaches his youth, Allah commands Ibrahim alongside his son to build the Kaaba, the house of Allah on earth. Upon the completion of this monumental task, Allah commands Ibrahim to call the people to perform the pilgrimage of Hajj. Bear in mind that this is still in the middle of the desert and the city of Mecca is still extremely small. Yet once again in sheer obedience to Allah, Ibrahim fulfills and calls the people. Allah says and proclaim to the people the Hajj, pilgrimage. They will come to you on foot and on every lean camel. They will come from every distant pass. The legacy. Today, that very call has been answered. And the fruits of Ibrahim's sincerity and obedience to God can be seen in full effect. Every year, millions upon millions of people travel from all corners of the world to visit the house of God, to walk in the footsteps of Ibrahim. Yet the story doesn't end there. For it is a while, Ibrahim on his own pilgrimage that he is approached by Satan. Satan being the open sworn enemy to humanity tries to corrupt his pilgrimage. However, in defiance to Satan, Ibrahim pelts him with stones and overcomes him. This event has been embodied in the Rami or the pelting opponent of Hajj whereby Muslims symbolically cast away Satan by pelting these same areas with stones. 
These important key events in the life of Ibrahim went on to become the manasik or rituals of Hajj. In one way or another, we can see that Hajj in fact is a celebration of the life of Ibrahim and an embodiment of his path. Allah commands the believers in the Quran in more than one occasion to follow the faith of Ibrahim, the upright. And just like that, come every year for Hajj. Muslims once again walk in the footsteps of one of the greatest men to ever live, Ibrahim. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon Ibrahim, his family, and the noble messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam.